runways and taxiways. We're going to take a look at uh, the airport diagram and explain uh, how you know the runways from the taxiways and what all the different signage means. And the different types of signs that you will find are either going to be red background with white lettering or black backgrounds with yellow light lettering or yellow background with black writing. And I'll show you an example. These are found in the far end for further study purposes. But a mandatory sign is shows red on the, the sign. And a mandatory sign looks something like this. You would find it at the hold short, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But this says that you're at the approach end of runway 15. But you see how it has the red background with the white lettering? Um, also, it's, uh, you could find a sign that has the uh, indication of where the ILS is. And also, you could have a do not enter sign. But those are mandatory signs that you need to obey. Obviously, you want to obey all of them, but that's very specific. That's why they put it in the red color for you. Um, positional signs show your position on either the runway or the taxiway. Those are going to be the ones that have the black background with the yellow uh, writing on them. The black background shows your position and the taxiways are denoted by the phonic alphabet. So this one would be showing you that you are on taxiway tango. Um, if you saw a black background sign on the runway, it may appear, uh, or on the side of the runway, it may appear something like this, where you have the black background with a number on there. That denotes that you have 3,000 feet remaining on the runway. So those will be positional signs. Directional signs, I really could have put also slash informational signs, um, those would be indicated by yellow coloring such as this with black writing on them. And directional signs may appear like this. It tells you that taxiway alpha is in that direction or the runway approach in for runway 5 is in that direction and so on. So those are uh, directional signs. You may also find some yellow background signs that are informational signs that um, may advise of noise abatement procedures or something similar to that. But those are your basic three types of signs that you're going to see as you're taxiing around. Mandatory are red backgrounds, positional are black backgrounds, and directional are yellow backgrounds. All right, let's take a look at um, the runways and how do they number them and how are they oriented. So the runways always have numbers and they associate them with the, the way they're uh, aligned magnetically and then they take the zero off the end. So for example, if, if the uh, runway faced in this direction and it was magnetically oriented 194 degrees, what they do is they would call this runway 19er as they rounded it to 190 and then they just drop the 4 off of it. So they call that runway 19. So runways get numbers by the magnetic direction they're oriented with, you know, rounded. Uh, taxiways, on the other hand, are uh, given letters, and we use the phonic alphabet when we're talking about those. So the controllers may say, taxi to runway 19er via right on Juliet, left on Alpha. So you should look for the J sign and then look for the A sign as you're taxiing along. Let's take a closer look at the airport diagrams. These were removed from this book, which is the Airport Facility Directory book. It has all the information um, about the airports within these states. And as you flip through this book, and they show each airport and the information about it, you see little small airport diagrams along here. But any airport that has a control tower, they give us very nice blow-up diagrams in the back of the book, like this. And to learn all of the different symbols on here, there's a legend right in the front of that section that you can study and look over again and again to understand the symbols. This first one here, this is uh, the Greenville Downtown Airport. This is our airport. It's golf mic uniform. And up in the top left corner, they give the frequencies used for this airport. We have the ASOS, that's Automated Surface Observation Service. That's our weather. We can dial in, dial this uh, 127.07 five into our comm radio and listen to continue broadcast of weather on the field. And then they give us the control tower frequency and they give us the ground frequency. The control tower frequency has a little star. That indicates that this tower closes in the evening. The first number here is the number 119.9. That number we use to put into our comm radio in order to talk to the control tower. 
This number over here, you don't need to worry about that. We don't have that type of radio that uses that frequency. The ground control is 121.25. The ground control, when we talk to them, in our, uh, we put that frequency in our comm radio, we talk to them, they control our movements on the ground. For example, uh, our permission to taxi to a runway or after we land to exit the runway, they control our ground movement. The tower frequency is used to clear us to take off and to land. Now keep in mind this is only at control tower airports. When we go to an airport that is non-control tower, it works a little bit differently. To take a closer look at the airport diagram itself, you can see right here that it says 19 and that signifies that this runway faces very close to 190 degrees. Again, reminding you that they do round it, so this could be actually 188 degrees, it could be 191 degrees, you don't know, they just round it to the nearest runway number. And again, it's oriented magnetically. Now the magnetic uh, north and south pole in the, in, on the Earth does shift through the years, so you may notice that through the years you're used to landing on 19 and all of a sudden next time you go to that airport it might be runway 20. Um, so the runway numbers are oriented magnetically and you see this one here is 1 and that faces 10 degrees or 010 degrees. This one is labeled 10 which is 10 but it's really to signify 100 degrees and this one is labeled 28 which signifies 280 degrees. Next we can look at the taxiways. The taxiways again are using the phonic alphabet. So for example, you may have taxiway hotel, taxiway alpha, taxiway Juliet, and so on. And when you call the ground controller, I gave you an example a moment ago, and they say uh, Cessna 4642 Juliet taxi to runway 19er via Juliet and left on alpha. Then you would taxi up here. There's a couple other things on here. Um, the ramps typically are named. You see north ramp. We often call this tower ramp because it is where the control tower is located. Um, there's east ramp and south ramp. A lot of times you'll see where it'll say FBO. Uh, let's see if there's one over here. Yes, here it says FBO and that's where general aviation parks. FBO stands for fixed base operation. It is the place that general aviation aircraft could go and refuel use the bathroom, borrow a courtesy car, get a drink, something like that. Now the other couple symbols that are on here that I want to point out are these little bubble shapes beside the runway. Those denote that it is a displaced threshold. A threshold is normally where the pavement and the runway, or correction, the pavement and the grass meet. So if this were runway one, for example, my threshold is this point right here. And that shows that's where the pavement starts and for example you would take off or land right here. But sometimes there's additional pavement before the threshold that you can still use for certain purposes. And they call that a displaced threshold. Because my real threshold is right here. That's where I would intend to land and touch down beyond this point right here. But sometimes they'll give you, um, the taxiway may come to here for example, and they'll give you an arrow like this. This type of threshold, or displaced threshold, allows you to uh, taxi and take off on this pavement. So your airplane could be back here and you could add full power and go ahead and start your takeoff from this point. But again, do not land unless you are beyond the actual threshold. So this threshold is illustrated with arrows. Other times you may see one that looks more like this. And we call these chevrons, and the chevrons means that, let me redraw this a little nicer, the chevrons means that this is not suitable for taxi or take off. It is only there in case you emergency overran your runway. So you're coming from the other way and you, for some reason, maybe your brakes uh, stopped working and you overran. You know there's still pavement here, but it's not safe for taxiing or landing or taking off in this area. And normally your taxiway that brings you to the runway would have stopped here anyways and uh, so you would know that you wouldn't taxi backwards on this in order to take off. So this displaced threshold uses the chevrons and they do not want you doing any type of operation in this area except for emergency overrun only. So that was the little bubble symbol right here.
that's a displaced threshold. The other type of symbol you may see is something similar to this. Where it'll be a little circle and it has HS there. That stands for a hot spot. A hot spot is, for whatever reason, a known area of confusion. So for some reason, the pilots tend to stay confused about the signage in that area, or it's a poor visibility for some reason. It could be a slope or a hill or something like that in the runway or taxiway. But a hot spot, uh, they publish these on here to alert the, the pilot to pay attention. That, that seems to be a problem area. All right, the other symbol we might see is something similar to this. And this little symbol with those arrows right there means that it's for a resting cable. Uh, this is a military airport, but civilians can land there, and the airlines land there also. This is Charleston Air Force Base. And um, sometimes on the ATIS, that's their weather, it's uh, Airport Terminal Information Service on 124.75. When you listen to their weather, um, after they give you the weather in the remarks section, they may say that the arresting cable is upright and rigged. That means that they've pulled this big cable across the runway right there, and in small aircraft, if you landed before that, it will rip your nose wheel out from underneath you. So you would want to make sure that you landed beyond that point if you were landing in this direction. And you can see they also have one down here. They also have yellow circles painted on the runway to denote where that arresting cable is if you actually flew there. Um, to help you see it more easily. Now those arresting cables are used by the military. I did tell you this is a military airport. The aircraft carriers practice landing and letting their hook grab those cables as they would do on an aircraft carrier.